speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Please do me a favor and pray for me silently that I could speak what God's word is and help you out with an encouragement in the word as well. Acts 2.38, I'm reading from the New American Standard Translation. Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. oh neighbor, yeah. your blessing yeah. is on the way. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your blessing is on the way. One of the toughest things to do in the realm of Christendom and outside of Christianity is what we're going to discuss today, and that is forgiveness. It's tough to forgive people. It's tough to forgive people when they have stabbed you in the back over and over and over again when you've tried everything you can to help them and not only do people sometimes are allowed to be used by the devil to stab you in the back, it just seems like some folks would take out the knife, stab you again, remove the knife and stab you again, and look in your face and say what? Yeah, yeah I did it. And we have to struggle and struggle with forgiveness. Have you ever been hurt before by somebody? Have you ever experienced pain because somebody hurt you? They tried to demonize you. They tried to lie on you. They tried to spread rumors to assassinate your name, assassinate your character, assassinate your position, assassinate your authority, assassinate your role. And they did all of that. And they even tried to demonize your name. Amen, somebody. Anybody in here had somebody that you've helped before that talked about your family? And not only did they talk about you, they talked about your family, put out a lie on your family. And, and then sometimes it's the very person that you would give your last dollar to. Do I have a witness in this place? And then you've done all you can to try to help them. And it's the very same people that want your position. They smile in your face and all the while, y'all know the song, they want to take your place down. Backstabbers. They should be back patters, but they backstabbers and you just can't understand the difficulty of trying to rationalize why people are doing this thing to you. They're trying to kill your credibility and honestly, it's so tough. And the last thing we want to think about is trying to forgive them. Do I have a witness in this place? And we say forgiveness just costs too much. Because sometimes when the person wrongs you, that hurt, uh, Mr. Brown, is just so fresh in your mind. And it's just, it just hurts you. It's just too new. And we can't even rationalize forgiving somebody. Can I let you know that forgiveness is a God idea? It is. It is. It is. It is a God idea. The idea, the very idea of forgiveness comes from the mind of God. Because if you're honest, when people hurt you and give you pain, and ha has anybody ever said something about you and you stayed up all night? Well, y'all ain't been hurting here. I, I, it, it hurt. And, and ain't no hurt like church hurt. Because church hurt is worse because you don't expect it from them. They're the people that's supposed to be in Christ and have the mind of Christ and behave like Christ. Are y'all in here? And, and what I want to do today is help us understand that sometimes as a, a repercussion of being hurt, we have things like anger. 
We have things like for uh, a resentment. We have things like recompense. In other words, uh, uh, we want to get some payback. Amen, somebody. And we have things, watch this, like hurt and pain. And if you're not careful, hatred. Am I talking to anybody in here? And those are byproducts because somebody hurt you. And the very last thing we want to do is forgive the very people who hurt us because we believe since they gave us that kind of pain, we need to unleash some pain on them so they can feel what they made us feel like. So they can go through the pain and the t crying and the tears that they made us go through. And sometimes it's a struggle to try to forgive somebody. Are y'all in here? So we got to make sure we understand something about forgiveness because some people are really prone and drawn to evil. Some people, although they got a suit on, they have a dress on, they are smile and shake your hand, but they as evil as they can be. And you got to ask for, for the spirit of discernment to try to figure out who's in your corner and who's not. And I heard somebody say, you ought to keep your enemies close to you. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes your enemies will try to, the, your, your frenemies will try to do you in. And it's always the people who you've given the most money. It's always the people who you've tried to call and check and help the most. Those will be the people that it'd be tough to forgive. But God wants to forgive you. Isn't that awesome? That God wants to forgive you. You would never understand the depth of forgiveness until you understand the tolerance of God. The tolerance of God. What God had to tolerate to forgive us will help us better understand how to forgive somebody else. Do you not know what God had to go through and tolerate and endure? Watch this just to forgive you. Okay, God loves us so much. God doesn't love us like we love each other. Because we love each other, watch this, not knowing everything folks have done. Oh, oh let me tell you something. There's no love like God's love. See, you love me and I love you, but I don't know your mind. I don't know what you've done. I don't know what you say about me behind my back. I don't even know what you say about me in your mind while you're talking to me and smiling. Watch this. God knows all of that and he still loves you. Look at the person next to you say he still loves you. Go ahead. He, he still loves you. So when we talk about the love of God. God, God loves you with a love that cannot be described because God love is, is everlasting. God's love is a love that he loves you in spite of you. Okay, newsflash, everything you've done, even while you were doing it, God hated the practice, but God still loved you. When you were turning up, tipping in and tipping out, getting high so high yeah when you were getting loose on fridays let me tell you something god still loved you it, it, it's the ability to tolerate a lot of mess that you hate it's the ability to tolerate somebody even though they're doing the wrong stuff right now watch this knowing that in the future somebody shot in the future they're going to end up doing the right thing and God still loved us and God still forgave us. That's why when you come to church, man, you ought to be so happy. You remember how happy you was when you caught the liquor store before seven o'clock? <laughs> you, do you, do you remember that? You all, you saw, I, I just made it. Woo! It was 659, right? <laughs> You ought to be just as happy or even more when you come to the house of the Lord and you can worship and praise the God that forgave you of all that stuff. Hey, man, somebody. God wants to forgive you. So there's this, this idea of forgiveness. Somebody shout forgiveness. Now, the text teaches us, um, and most of you are very, very familiar with Acts 2. There's a word there that says, for the forgiveness 
of all your sins. Be baptized, every one of you, each of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness. Somebody shout forgiveness. For the forgiveness of your sins. Has anybody in here been taught since a child that God loves you and God has a plan for your life and God wants to help you and God wants to use you in spite of you, but we went the wrong way. And, and, and you knew the word, the word permeated your spirit. It, it was just deep in the corridors of your mind, but we still went the opposite way. And I'm going to be honest with you, if, for, for those of you who have good hearts and love the Lord and really truly want to walk the, the straight and narrow, it's, 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 you feel guilty. And, and that guilt will cause you so much pain. Because you feel guilty when you have not done what God wants you to do. So God knows that it pains our hearts when we should obey him, but we don't obey him and we have a level of guilt behind our sins. Sometimes we have a level of guilt because we're trying to pay back people with sin because they sinned against us. And then after we do that, we don't feel as good as we thought we would feel about it. And then we have sin behind that and guilt behind that. So God had to create a concept, an idea a logos he had to formulate a plan to help us get rid of the very guilt and the anger and the frustration and the hostility that we had when we sinned so he came up with this idea called forgiveness somebody shout forgiveness now brother wall i want you to look at the king james version because there's a word there that i want to use which describes forgiveness now in the king james version it says then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission everybody say remission 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 now remission literally literally means forgiveness remission is to remit it conveys the idea of separation. So when God says that when you be baptized, it is for the remission, that is for the separation of the punishment that the sin infraction deserves. In other words, God says, I am going to separate you from the punishment that this sin is supposed to give you. So when it says remission, he is going to separate you from that punishment. He is going to forgive you. He's going to set you free. He is going to release you. And that is what is involved with the idea of forgiveness. Let me, let me take it a little bit. Let me take it a little bit deeper here. When, when a doctor gives a cancer patient treatment. They come up with a, a substance or a poison that they can inject the body that will attack and kill the cancer in the body. Now, the process that God uses, God uses and looks at our body of sin. And what God does is he allows the blood of Jesus to attack and kill every lie every time you stole and the blood of Jesus is going to every time you stole some every time you lied every time you fornicated and the blood of Jesus is going in your body of sin and attacking all of those sins to release you from that so your sins go into remission are y'all following me on today so the blood of Jesus is how you get remission of your sins you are set free because it goes into your body of sin and attacks every sin that you did and it kills it now with cancer y'all know that stuff can come back but God is a doctor in another profession amen somebody because God said he remembers your sins no more amen somebody and you are freed from all of that because you have been forgiven 
Oh God, forgiveness is unbelievable. It's crafted in the mind of God and the idea that God can release you from that and not even remember it. It's, 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 it's a divorce. You know, divorce is a separation. It's, it's, a, it's a divorce from being penalized for that sin. Now you have been divorced from sin and set free. Isn't that all right? Now watch this. The devil don't want you to know none of this. He wants you to be trapped in your car, feeling like you're about to have an accident because of all the wrong you've done in your life. Amen, somebody. And if you're not careful, if you don't understand the concept of forgiveness, you won't even know how to praise God the way God needs to be praised. Because when you have been, anybody here been forgiven by God? Oh, God. And watch this. Let, let's break down the compound word. When you see the word remission, think about the word renew. Think about the word recharge. Anytime you see R-E in front of something, it means that you're about to do it again. Are y'all still follow me? So when he says remission, he's giving you another opportunity, R-E, to go on another, oh, y'all ain't hearing me this morning, on another mission. Because the first time you had the mission, you fail. So when he comes in your life and uses the blood of Jesus to forgive you, now he's giving you another mission. Now you have a remission. Oh, God, y'all ain't feeling me in this morning. Oh, God, that's why you let your preacher go to school. Lord, have mercy. Goodness, gracious, alive. So forgiveness is good. Forgiveness is awesome if you don't get anything else in this life. If you can just get forgiven, you can live free. You're not going to be perfect, but that blood of Jesus will cleanse you. Now, here's how God had to do it. Sin has to be punished. Sin cannot go without being punished. Okay, get that into your mind. He, he still loves you, but sin has to be punished. Let me tell you how bad God wants to remove your guilt. Let me tell you how bad God and the links that God will go to so that you could be forgiven. Here's what God did. God had to create a plan. He had to create a, a way for us, for him to still be God as our judge. He had to create a way to punish sin and allow us to be forgiven. Now, God had to punish somebody for our sins. And we all have sinned for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. So God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my son. And Jesus was a perfect sacrifice. And the reason why there had to be a sacrifice, Brother Walla, is because sin had to be punished. So for him to punish us would not help because we have sinned before, so it wouldn't be a good sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not a good enough sacrifice. Go ahead. You, 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 ain't, no, you, ain't, no, you ain't no good enough sacrifice because your blood is not pure. And since your blood has been tainted with, with, and dripped with sin, you are not pure anymore. So God killing us would not be a good enough sacrifice. So what God had to do is take something holy. He had to take something good. He had to take something perfect. He could not take a lamb. He could not take a ram. He could not take a goat. He could not take something that was an animal. He had to get a precious human sacrifice. For the sacrifice of bulls and animals and goats will no longer be needed because those types of animal sacrifices in the Old Testament could not fully take away your sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 4. So what we need to understand is God sent the best that he had to become a sacrifice for our sins. So if we obey the process so that we could be forgiven of sins, it has to be through the blood of Jesus Christ. So when you see Jesus, and, and, and let me just get this on the record, the radio, the internet, and Facebook, whatever. If we are going to be appreciative... It needs to be because we understand the power of the blood of Jesus. If you, don't get, if you don't get anything else right, make sure you have a good understanding of the importance of the blood of Jesus. 
Uh, in the academic field, it's called, it's called Christology. That's the study of Christ. And in Christology, we are studying how Jesus came to be the sacrifice for my sins. Okay, what we do is we look at how everybody else made us feel, gave us pain, gave us hurt, and we want them to be punished. But we forget how all the times that we did the same thing to God and God did not punish us. Well, who did he punish, Brother Jones? He, he came up with a plan so that he could still be a righteous God and give justice, but he could still save us. He could release us from looking in the mirror in the morning when we've had a sin infraction on Saturday night. Don't you get too holy on me in here, praise God. Y'all don't, don't have some Saturday nights before where you done went crazy? him and somebody and you've done some things watch this so god had to come up with a plan so god said i'm gonna send the best that i got he sent his only son why did he send his only son because his only son was the only one who never sinned and since he never sinned he is then an acceptable sacrifice in the eyes of god because in order for us to be forgiven as human beings it's going to require a perfect human being an animal just won't work. Even somebody. So Jesus came. His own received him not. And so when you look at the life of Jesus, Brother Cleman, it, 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 it makes you want to appreciate him because, uh, you know, has anybody ever had somebody close to you that just did you in? You had, a, you, had a, you had a Judas. You know, he sold you out for a few pieces of silver. Amen, somebody. Instead of trying to touch the hem of your garment, he wanted to sell you out, right? Amen. Have you ever thought about the fact that Jesus operated his earthly ministry for three years alongside the person that he knew that was going to sell him out and he still did the will of God? He knew that Judas was going to do it. So Jesus was able to operate and do the will of God, knowing that the person on his left side or his right side or wherever Judas was in the surroundings was going to betray him. So don't you give up on the mission of God when folk betray you because if they, they had not betrayed you now. Amen. Somebody is probably going to be coming in the future. And, and watch this. If, if it's somebody in the church, don't you leave this church. Don't you leave this church. Because let me tell you something, we got a perfect church with imperfect people. And, and, and all of us are still growing. Am I right about it? So, so God had to come up with a plan. So Jesus came, walked this earth in the flesh, died on the cross. See, you couldn't take Jesus' life. He had to give it. And what I'm trying to do this morning is help you understand God's process. Because I told you that forgiveness is a God idea. This was God's idea to remit our sins, to have our sins go into remission. And God remembers our sins no more. It's because of the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, having to die, hadn't done nothing wrong. His family relatives did not even believe in him like that. He had to go and suffer on the cross. He had to be humiliated, mocked, spat upon, beaten, and all of that stuff. Watch this. Just because Brian C. Jones sinned. And wow, you're looking at me. I said, wow, you're looking at me? He had to come for you too. So really, I put him on the cross. And, and, and why are you looking at me? You put him on the cross. Because if you sin one time, you need the blood of Jesus. Give God some praise for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. I thank God. I thank God. When folk do me wrong, I thank God for the blood. I don't know about you, but it was the blood. I said, I don't know about you, but I, I know it was the blood. I said, I know. I know it was the blood that saved me. It was that blood that was perfect. It was the blood that was pure. It was the blood that was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. So that was God's plan. And now if God could do all of that, and I don't know about you, but anybody, I work in the financial field too, so there was a thing called a bankruptcy. Anybody ever 
heard of a bankruptcy before all the commercials and uh, you know and, and what they do is they uh, settle your debt when you have a debt <laughs> that you can't pay and can I tell you that everybody in here got a debt now I'm not telling you to go bankrupt now don't don't say from the pulpit of our preacher say you bankruptcy no he didn't say that I ain't saying that I'm just trying to give you a little trade to help you understand this thing Hey, when God gives us a, a debt cancellation, amen, somebody, that is through the blood of Jesus. So for every liar, every fornicator, every idolater, every adulterer, every thief, every effeminate, every homosexual, every person that has done immoral sins, he still loved you. For God demonstrates his own love towards us while yet we were sinners Christ died for the ungodly and can I tell you you may not see yourself in in that uh, that, that vein now but there was a time in your life where you were ungodly don't miss don't don't miss the shout he 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 died and sent Jesus through his love while you were sinning now we can't tolerate folk when they don't do what we tell them to do. It's, it, it's, it's hard to, to tolerate folk when you keep having to tell them over and over and over again. At some point, we just say, you know what, I'm done. I'm disgusted. I'm tired. I'm bothered. Ooh, I'm hot. Amen, somebody. And, and I'm just sick of dealing with this. Now, God didn't do us like that. And you cannot appreciate being forgiven until you understand what God had to go through to forgive us. And let me just tell you something. He had to tolerate us. So God wants to forgive us. And he does that through a process. See, the occasion of baptism is the process that God uses to forgive us for people who are sorrowful. Now watch this. God only forgives sorrowful people. So, so there, there's some folk, uh, even in politics, that's claiming that they don't need no forgiveness. Are y'all hear me? I said there's some folk that say they don't need to ask for forgiveness and they don't need no forgiveness. Well, why are you going to a church then? See, Jesus is for folk who need to be forgiven. So you don't need Jesus if you don't need no forgiveness. But I don't know about you, but I... I need Jesus because every now and then I fall short. Every now and then I say some stuff I don't really want to say. Every now and then I feel bad for what I've done. And when I feel bad, I need somebody to call on. I said I need somebody to call on. And, and, and Jesus is who I can call on every hour. There's a song, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. When do you need him? Every every hour i need thee so you need jesus look at the person next to you and say neighbor you need jesus that's the wrong neighbor look at the other person and say neighbor you need jesus i'm so glad i'm so glad sister Cobb, that he went to the cross i'm so happy and so thankful he went to that cross that old rugged cross because sin has to be punished. Now, God also wants you to forgive those. Now, we don't, we don't like this part. See, God wants to forgive you. But God also wants you to forgive those who hurt you. And what we always do is we forget how much we need it to be forgiven. And we want other folk to be punished. Amen. We want them to be punished right away. You know, God just opened up a little portable hell and just open up, the, open up the ground. You know how you parted the Red Seas, God? Just, just part the ground and just let them go in that little hell right there, right there, God. That, that'll be all right with me. And, I, and Lord, we'll pray for their families, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we, we want God to punish immediately. Am I right about it? That's, that's because, as the young folks say, we, 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 we're, we're in our feelings. we in... I'm in my feelings, you know. Um, I speak out in my feelings when I when I feel hurt, 
when I feel bruised and I feel bad. But what we forget is that's what Jesus had to go through to forgive us of sins. So God wants you to forgive others. Now, forgiveness has nothing to do with what you say. Okay. Forgiveness. And we all have done it. Um, man, I, listen, I forgive you. And, 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 and when, you, when you see him, you start looking around and see if you can find a rock that you could just... Is, you say, I ain't got no knife. Okay. Now, hold up, bro. You just said you forgave him. That, that's why I know it ain't got nothing to do <laughs> with what you're saying. Can I help you all out with this? And I'm, I'm, I'm really done. Um, when you become a Christian, you have to mature in your understanding of forgiveness. Most of us are older, but we have a a, a, a grade school understanding of forgiveness. It's way deeper than that. Forgiveness is releasing a person and in your behavior towards them, you can demonstrate good things for them, to them, and by them without ever mentioning what they did to you. I need you. Thank you, Brother Clean. But I just need somebody else in here to be a fly on the wall and just listen to what we're saying here. So when God forgives, he forgets. We still remember, but we cannot treat people with our behavior toward them because we're still holding things against them. So we really have not forgiven them. You, you, you really have to get to the point where you... You don't look at it from their level. You have to look at it from God's level. And if it, it, we'll always never forgive people if we look at it from our level. Because it takes us a while cognizantly to come up with the fact that we really need to drop this. Some people have lost family members in terms of their relationships over a, a debt or issue that happened 30 years ago. It's tough for married folk to let stuff go because of the hurt. And spiritual people want other people to feel the hurt. That's just because we're human. So we cannot have this third grade idea of forgiveness and expect peace and healthy relationships to come about. It's not going to happen. So when you forgive a person, as a matter of fact, you ought to get into the habit of not even. Unless they ask you, you don't need to tell them you forgave them. Because the moment you do that, you're putting a bullseye on your back because they're looking to see whether or not you're going to treat them, any, treat them the same. What would be more impressive is if that they wronged you and they know they wronged you, if you to just love them and never bring it up. Now, I ain't saying that's easy. Matter of fact, I will publicly say it's very difficult. But I want to encourage you to suggest that it was difficult for Jesus. When Brian C. Jones messed up, it was difficult for Jesus when you messed up. But he went along with the plan and went to the cross for us anyhow. So what I'm simply saying is relationships can be rebuilt. Relationships can be forged when we release people from what they did to us. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you really think about it, a lot of the things that God allowed us to go through when people hurt us and pained us and wronged us, it drew us closer to the Lord. You ain't never been on your knees. You ain't never been on no, your knees like when they lied on you and, and, and slandered your name and slandered your character. And, and, and you know what's so hurtful? When you know they know that they know they lying. I mean, you know you didn't do it. But they want to tell the people that they, know that, you, they know that you have some favorability with and some influence with. And they try to destroy everything that your good character has worked for and worked hard on. 
That's what's so hurtful, man. That's what's so hurtful. And then we lose all the spirituality and we start acting just like folk in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got one more time, I'm telling you. They got one more time. Yeah, I'm getting my gun out today. Uh-uh. They come over here with that stuff today. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm going back to the old me for just a day. Amen. Some God, God, I'll be back after a while. I, I, I got to let them have it. That's what we do. But it's my job to help us understand we're better than that. And if, and if the world is going to see Christ in us every day, we have to work towards improving being able to truly forgive people. When you can truly forgive a person, that means that you are able to treat them as if they did not do it. If you would normally give them $5 around the first of the month and then they lie on you between the first and the 31st. And then when you get your check on the first, you say, not, not this month. No, -uh, mm -mm, I got, you start saying stuff like I got bills and I got, I got to put up, I got to save it for Christmas. And you, why? Because you hurt, man. So when you have truly forgiven them, you know what you do? You give them that normal $5 and you go on about your business and you pray for them and you love them. And, and then some of us, when you see somebody walking that you would normally pick up and you drive in your car, y'all, y'all better come get me. Instead of picking them up, you feel like running them over. And the devil is crazy how he'll put thoughts in your mind that you would never do. Don't act like y'all ain't in here with me. You have had some thoughts. And that's the thing about God. God knows those thoughts that are negative that enter into our minds even though we don't act on them. I'm telling you, man, I've had some thoughts before, man, and I, and I wanted to fight the devil. Why are you coming in my mind putting some crazy? I'm not going to do nothing like that. That's not who I am. I'm, a, I'm telling the devil, I'm a preacher. They looking up to me. I'm not going to hurt them. You better get thee behind me, Satan. And I had to fight because you got to fight to hold on to your Christianity. You got to fight to hold on to the Holy Ghost. You got to fight to stay in the church. You got to fight to keep your marriage together. Fight to keep your family together. Hey, amen, somebody. We got to fight. We got to fight. Because the devil is a roaring lion trying to devour you. And he is a crafty being that will use tricks of the mind. And he's, he's doing a number on our country right now. And we got to pray for one another. So in order to receive forgiveness, you have to repent. Because repentance is linked to forgiveness. So in order to receive forgiveness, you have to repent. Here's a caveat. We don't think about that often. In order to give forgiveness, you got to repent. Because the natural inclination is not to just forgive them. So you have to change your mind and not do what the devil wants you to do. Then you can forgive. So the same process works with forgiving people when you get forgiven. In order to get forgiven, initially, you have to repent and be baptized to be forgiven. But when you need to forgive people that you do not want to forgive, you got to repent too. Lord, I got to change my mind. I don't want to do it. I, I need to do the right thing to them instead of the thing that's popping up in my mind. Y'all should be shouting right now. If I appreciate it, Mount Nemo, they've been jumping over the pews by now. Yeah, Lord. Forgiveness, man, is tough. But it's something that we're called to do. And so, 50 days after Jesus died, got up from the grave, there were some people who were murderers. There were some people on the first gospel sermon that were in favor of having Jesus killed and he was and the reason why he was killed was because they were chanting crucify him Amen. That's right. crucify him you know what I always wonder brother Cleveland if Judas did not die and, and be led to his death he could have gotten forgiven of the person that he betrayed So murderers were forgiven by the very same Jesus whom they sent to a crucifixion. Amen. And when they were convicted, 
doing the first gospel sermon of Acts 2, everybody here should be familiar with that. They asked a question, what shall we do? They said, they said, what shall we do? And the reason why they asked that question is because in Acts 2.36, Peter said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this same Jesus. Watch the conviction of murder whom you crucified. You killed him. You are murderers. What has God done, Peter? He's made him both Lord and Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the only sacrifice you can get for the relief and the remission and the forgiveness of your sins. And when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38 says, Peter says, repent and be baptized. Everybody say baptized. baptized. That is water baptism. That is water immersion. That is submersion. That is water that is being overwhelmed. That's being completely covered. Be baptized. Who has to do it? Some people. Just some folk in South Carolina. Every one of you. Every one of you murderers. Every one of you people who sent them to the cross. Every one of you got it. Everybody that's feeling guilty right now because you've been pricked by the Holy Ghost to believe that Jesus is really both Lord and Christ. All right. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I'm commanding you to be baptized. For what reason? For the remission. So that the blood of Jesus can go in your body of sin and attack every sin that you have ever committed. And your sin will be remitted. It will be forgiven. They will be pardoned. You will be set free. You will be released. And what else are you going to get? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in verse number 41, those who gladly receive the word were baptized the same day. Everybody say same day. Same day. It doesn't matter. If, if, if you can just understand that God sent Jesus to die for your sins so that you can have your guilt released, you can have a clean slate, you can have all your sins remitted. If you, if you can just understand that he came and he died and he was buried and he got up from the grave, if you can just repent of your sins and just make up your mind, I, I, I feel godly sorrow. I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to try my hardest. If you can just obey God and just be baptized in water. You can get the forgiveness of your sins. And he's not going to leave you alone. The Bible says in verse number 38, he's going to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, the same day that that was preached, because some people think you got to know everything. Can, can, I, can I just have a moment of, of, of pause parenthetically? Can I tell you something? When I got baptized at 18 years old, I knew Jesus died for my sins. I knew he was buried. I knew he got up from the grave. I had an understanding of repentance. I knew what baptism was for. But that was 21 years ago, man. My understanding, sister friend, of repentance now is way more. Man, my understanding of baptism now is way more. So you will always grow in your understanding of the gospel. You don't have to know it and wait and wait and wait till you get more knowledge of it. It's simple. So when you just do it with your understanding, God accepts your correct understanding. Watch this where you're at right now. God didn't expect you to have the understanding of somebody who studied Acts 2.38 for 20 years. He wants you to obey it with your understanding of it right now. And every, every time you come to church, every year he blesses you to have another year of life, your understanding of the gospel will grow. And we thank God for that. And then the Bible says that they were praising God and having favor with all of the people. And the Lord was adding to the church daily such as should be saved stand to your feet stand to your feet stand to your feet i know how tough it is church to um have people hurt you and i would never stand in this pulpit and act like it does not pain us but i want you to think about the pain that jesus had to go through so if you if you're holding on to some hurt because of the emotional pain that that person or those people or that family member or that spouse or that child calls you, I want you to set them free today. I want you to set them free. I want you to release them and be able to behave towards them as if they never did it to you. And whatever you would normally do in your relationship, I want you to do that and act in that way. And when you're doing that, you're being more like God. 
And if you need forgiveness yourself, why don't you come down? If you're just struggling with that, we want to pray for you. You can come to the front row. The doors of the church are open. You can come to the front row right now. If you just need prayer uh, to release somebody, you have, you have held some frustration. You have held, God bless you. You have held some hostility towards somebody. And it may be, they may not even be ready to forgive you. But you got to be ready to forgive them. If you need prayers right now to help for God to help you do that, we want to pray for you today. Maybe there's one today that has not come to understand Acts 2.38 and how forgiveness is a God idea. We want you to come as well and give your life to Jesus. It takes three seconds to obey God and know that Jesus' blood cleanses you from all your sins once you obey him in the process, process and the occasion of baptism. If you need to come, come right now as we stand together and sing. I